All right. Go ahead and look at the worksheet. We're going to make a video of this so that people who are here can look back. All right. So, yeah, so I'll say F the police during the video because that would be awkward. Okay. All right. So, this one um, today, we are focusing on finding the equation of the derivative, which means we have to use the limit definition that has the H in it. We don't get to use the other one because they want us to find the equation of the derivative. We have to find where all the answers should come from. And then after we find the equation, they do want us to find a specific definition. Okay? So it's kind of like yesterday, except today we actually have two answers. One is the equation where you can get all of the slopes at all the different points. And then one is another answer where you're looking at the specific slope at a specific point. So two answers for each problem. Okay? I said write really small because you have a lot of simplifying work that you have to show, and you have to write limit every single time, because if you don't on the AP test, they will mark you down. Like, you will not get any points for the whole problem because your notation is incorrect. Make sense? Okay, so go ahead and write the formula at the top of the page so that you have it to refer back to. So at the top, we're gonna say the limit as H approaches zero, of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And I think what we're gonna do is maybe, I'm guessing you guys are gonna be okay with number one because that one is pretty straightforward, but maybe you're not gonna like number three as much. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 not number three. So I think we're gonna look. At, I think we're gonna look at number three first. I'm gonna look at my notes to make sure I don't mess this up. Okay. So first step, I have to write f of x plus h Okay, is that zoomed in enough? Okay, so I'm going to say f of x plus h, I take my square root, and I put the x plus h just in for the x. And then what do I do? You minus your original equation, you minus f of x. And you, underneath the square root sign, you can distribute the five, but you don't necessarily need to. So I've got all of that over H. And what type of problem did this just become to find the limit? <laughs> We're gonna rationalize or use a conjugate, right? Okay, so I'm gonna multiply this by what? That whole thing, but with a plus in the middle, okay. That's a plus, sorry, I wrote times, but I meant plus. So what do I do with the top? I foil it. So the first uh, square root times the first square root gives me what? 5 x plus h plus 2. So 5 times x plus h plus 2. So the two square roots canceled out completely, and I just get what is underneath them. Okay. So I did the first times the first. When I multiply the outsides, I get the positive square root of one times the positive square root of the other. When I multiply by the insides, I have the negative version of the exact same thing. Those two things cancel out. Okay, so I don't even have to write them down. 
And then when I multiply the last, I get negative square root of 5x plus 2 times positive square root of 5x plus 2. And what does that give me? Minus 5x plus 2. Minus 5x plus 2. So I'm going to put minus, and then the 5x plus 2 is all being subtracted, and so it has to go in parentheses. And then what should I do for the bottom? Put an H. What else do I put? All the other stuff. And I leave it. Anyone remember why I leave it? Yeah, the majority of the time, something's going to cancel and it's going to work out nicely. Okay. And what did I miss? Limit notation. Yeah. Also, there's a pretty good chance I have not written small enough. Sorry in advance. <laughs> Sometimes I try to conserve trees. If you're ever doing your work on a separate sheet of paper, then when you turn it in, just make sure you staple that paper to your paper or put your name on it and turn it in with it. So if you ever do your work on a separate sheet of paper, I want that sheet as well. Okay. All right. So what do we do now? Yeah, we want to get rid of those parentheses. So I have 5x plus 5h plus 2. So that's when I distribute this 5. And then I have minus 5x minus 2. Are you guys noticing how repetitive these conjugate problems are? Yes. They are very similar every single time. Okay, so what cancels? 5x, 5x, 2, and 2. And since all we have left over on the top is a 5h, that's the only thing left, what can we cancel? The h. So we just have a 5 on the top, and then we have that stuff on the bottom, the messy stuff in the parentheses that has not disappeared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ditch my limit notation because I'm about to plug 0 in for h. Okay? So I've got the 5 on the top, and then on the bottom I have 5 times x plus 0 plus 2 plus square root of 5x plus 2. So what do we have on the bottom? Yeah, we have the square roots. Are they the same? Yes. Yes, they simplify to be the same. They're both going to be 5x plus 2 and 5x plus 2. So if you have one five, root 5x plus 2 and another root 5x plus 2, then how many roots do you have total? Two. Okay, so with this notation, now do you guys remember, I think it was the video from yesterday, I said the different types of notation for derivatives. I, there was one where it was y prime, that's what we focused on yesterday. And then there was one that said dy dx. And then there was one that said um, f prime of x. And there was one with a y with a dot above it that I said I'd never seen before. Okay, so this one I can see from the original problem they used the dy dx notation. And so I'm going to match that notation when I write my answer here. Okay, so if the original problem was y equals the square root of 5x plus 2, then my derivative equation, sorry I ran out of space, my derivative equation is going to be dy dx equals 5 over 2 square roots of 5x plus 2. So that equation will give me the slope at any point on that whole curve. I can find the slope at negative 1, I can find the slope at 0, I can find find the slope at a million. I can find the slope anywhere on that curve just by plugging the number in for x. Does that make sense? Okay. 
So this is the equation of the derivative because it gives me all sorts of answers. That's our first answer for the problem. First answer. This is the first. We are going to have two. Because what, what does the original equation want us to find, the original problem? They want us to evaluate the derivative for when x equals 0. That's why they said dy dx evaluated at x equals 0. Do you see how weird that notation is? We're going to use that a little bit. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and take that equation, and I'm going to say dy dx evaluated at x equals 0, and I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. And what do I get? I get 5 on top, right? Yeah. Over 2 root 2. The nice thing about calculus is they'll let us leave answers like that. And so that is the slope at 0 specifically. All right, now everyone is going to need a calculator. So, grab your calculator. If you need to use one of mine, come trade me something so you can use one of mine. A cell phone, a student ID, keys. All right, so for the most part, for the most part, we are going to do calculus without a calculator, but there is a portion of the AP exam that is calculator active, and for that portion, I want you guys to be able to find answers quickly and to be able to manipulate your calculator and use your calculator to check answers quickly. So what we're going to do here is we're going to graph the original function. So we'll go ahead and type in square root of 5x plus 2 and your y equals... And for your window, um, negative 10 to 10, like the normal window, will work just fine here. If you ever have an issue with your calculator where it's not doing what you want, just clear the memory. So second plus 712 and then type it again and you should be good. Whenever a kid brings me a calculator with an issue, that's all I do. I clear it, I retype it, and then I fixed it. All right. Um, and I want you to go ahead and graph it. And we're going to type second trace. Second trace gets us to our menu of options. And what do you see on that menu of options? dy dx. So we're going to tell the calculator, find the derivative. And what value do we want to find the derivative at? Zero. Zero. Type in zero. Now, did it give you the exact answer? No, it gave you the approximate. Give you the approximate. You guys see that? Okay. 1.7677. I'm going to write that down real quick. And now I'm going to go ahead and get out of that screen and just make sure I have the right answer. All right. Did I get it? Yes. Okay, so for today, that's going to be how I want you to check your answers. I'll still put up my answer key so you can look at the work if you want to see if your work is right. But that's a good way to check your answers quickly. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, we are also going to go over number two because complex fractions were um, a little bit of an issue for us. So I want to make sure we can do this one. So how should I start number two? So the limit as h goes to 0 of uh, 1 over x plus h. Yeah, 1 over x plus h minus, give it a second, there we go, 1 over x plus h minus 1 over x all divided by 
H. Okay. So what method do we use to fix this complex fraction? Find the common denominator. Find the common denominator. And the common denominator is? X and X plus H. Yeah, X and X plus H. So this H on the bottom is over a 1. So the, the denominator of the H doesn't really help us much. But the denominators of the other piece, the X and the X plus H, that's what we're going to use. So we're going to multiply this by X times X plus H. So what do we do next? We, we take this and we multiply it by the first term. So when you have 1 over x plus h and you multiply it by x times x plus h, what cancels? The x plus h is cancel and what does it leave behind? An x. All right. When we take all this stuff right here and we multiply it by this term, the x cancels with the x, and what are we left with? X plus, x plus h. And I have to make sure to put that in parentheses because the whole group is being subtracted. And then when we multiply the bottom, what do we get? H, x, x plus h. Yep. So on the bottom, we get the whole thing. And what am I missing? Your limit, notation. limit notation. So what should I do on the top? Alright, and then what do you see? Okay, the x is cancel, x minus x. And now what do you see? The h. So this h can cancel with this h. So I still have that negative. That negative was a coefficient for the h. So what number does that leave on the top? One. Negative 1, good. Negative 1 is left on the top. Um, on the bottom, we have the x times x plus h. Am I able to do direct substitution now? Yeah, yeah I can plug in 0 and not have an issue. So I have x times x plus 0. And what does that give you? So negative 1 over x squared. Okay, so that's the equation of our derivative. So if you have the curve 1 over x and you want to find the slope at any point on 1 over x, you're going to take the x value and plug it into this equation and that will tell you the slope at any single point. Okay. So what notation did they use? Y prime. Y prime. So we are going to say y prime equals negative 1 over x squared. There's our first answer. And what evaluation did they want us to do? 2. Two. So we are going to write y prime of 2. We're saying we're plugging in 2, y prime of 2. And we have negative 1 over 2 squared. Mm -hmm. Negative 1 fourth. So y prime of 2 equals negative 1 fourth. There's our second answer. So the uh, original equation was 1 over x. The derivative was negative 1 over x squared. The instantaneous rate of change at 2 was negative 1 fourth. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and graph that and check my answer. So how do I check it? So again, trace, get to that menu. dy dx, so number 6. And what am I plugging in? 2. 
negative point two five zero 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 one. Your calculator is struggling to get the exact answer, but what does it basically say? Negative one fourth. Yes. For I I did the original function one over x. Make sure you graph the original function. You are not graphing the derivative. You are graphing the original function and you're taking and you're using your calculator to find the derivative at the specific point. So is your calculator going to give you the equation of the derivative? No, it's not. Your calculator is going to be able to tell you the derivative at a specific point though. Okay? Um, so we're using the original equation and then we're telling the original equation find the derivative and so now your calculator is not using the 1 over x, now your calculator is going to use this. Now your calculator is going to use the negative 1 over x squared when it does its own calculations. So when we do it, yeah, we're saying calculator use the derivative and it's doing the work in its head, we're plugging in 2 and that's where we get the negative 1 fourth because your calculator is using, it's not evaluating 1 over x. It's not saying 1 over x is 1 half. It's not saying that. It's taking the 1 over x and it's using the derivative to find the slope at 2. And if you look at the curve, the slope at 2, if I was to make a little tangent line, the tangent line would be something like this kind of, and that has a slope of negative 1 fourth. Kind of. Oh yeah, that's what your video was last night. Okay. Okay.